And I want to speak to you today about breakthrough in worship. Breakthrough in worship. I've, I broke my glasses this morning. So I said to my wife, I'm trusting God just to heal my eyes. But I have increased my font. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I still got to preach the word. So, but uh, I'm trusting God for, for, literally, I'm trusting God that I would not need to wear glasses. There are three levels of worship that we break through in. Three levels that we have to get in if, in order to break through the next level of worship. And I want to talk to you about, when I talk about worship, I'm just talking about the worship service, the singing part. I'm talking about your relationship with the Lord, the way you engage with God, your, your daily devotional life, the, the way you engage with God in the world. The first one, we worship at the level of our revelation. We really can't worship past that level. Your revelation of who God is and what he does will directly affect the level of your worship. Now, I want to say to you that it is, it is possible to come to church and enjoy the worship experience and not worship God. And many do. And this is why people come late to church, because they're not seeing their contribution as part of what we do to worship God. They're coming to be entertained. They're spectators, not participators. When we, this was not set up for you, do you know that? This whole service. The whole service is facilitating us to be able to worship the audience of one. It's about him, not you. Sunday service really is about having the preeminence of God. In other words, he's first. And all attention is not on a man, not on a band. We are just facilitating an encounter with the Lord. We come ready to worship Him. And so when you come into His presence, you're ready to see an aspect of God that you haven't seen before. And that takes you to the next level of worship. When you have a fresh revelation of God. Is your revelation of God still or old? Do you still see God the same way that you saw him five months ago? That's my barometer. That's what I test in my understanding of who God is. Or is there something new about him that energizes my worship? It's more than just emotions. It's revelation. Now, we all can experience the emotions of worship, which I, we all need because God created our emotions, right? God created our soul, we need to feel. And, and emotions is part of the worship experience. In fact, that's what God uses to draw us our, te- our attention. But it can't just be emotions. As, as part of it, I cried throughout the service this, this morning. I was touched, and I don't even understand why. And I don't always need to understand why I'm touched. I just got to experience the emotion of being in his presence because he's awesome. But if it just stays with me crying, not seeing him, I have a fresh revelation. I will never move to the next level or the breakthrough in worship. I don't know if the slides are moving along, but you can move us to the next slide. <clears throat> Psalm 145 Verse 2 says, every day with its new reasons, I will bless you and praise you. And his greatness is so unsearchable. There's this mystery of ever discovering God. There's new things that I can discover about him. Every day with its new reasons, I worship him. Revelations speaks about the four living creatures 
who had six wings and was covered with eyes all round, even under their wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We just sang that. But you know the difference? These, these beings, these weird looking creatures, in heaven has unlimited perspective of who God is. Every time they look at him, they see another aspect of God. No matter how they turn, they have a revelation, and a fresh revelation of God, and it, they never stop saying holy. And every time they say holy, it's based on a new revelation, a fresh perspective of God. You and I should have that and can have that. You worship at the level of your revelation. Worship without fresh revelation is nothing more than religion. The, the moment you start seizing to have a fresh revelation of God, then you worship out of habit. And that's better than nothing. But you can't just worship out of habit. You have to worship out of revelation. You guys with me? What is God showing you about him? Is there not a renewed sense of awe? Sense of wonder? Splendor? That you can sing an old song and it becomes new because of the revelation. You know, I can sing, then sings my soul till I die. It's not just nostalgic. It's out of a fresh revelation of who God is. The second, the second level of worship, we worship at the level of our warfare. I love the way Melvin led us this morning. Now, Melvin, stand up. I, I, this is amazing when you have to introduce the parents in accordance to their children. This is Timothy's father. <laughs> Just if you didn't know that. And now you know why Timothy's so powerful. We worship at the level of our warfare. And he led us into warfare prayer this morning. What are you contending for? What mountains must God shake? What are the things that is going on in your life that you can worship at that place of desperation, of, of utter, I need a breakthrough. And, and you know, there's something to be said for, for people who are at the place of the end of themselves. That is not always a bad place to be. Because you, you're able to move on to the next level if you handle that moment right. Paul and Silas was in prison. I don't know if there's a more darker place other than hell to be in a Roman prison. That's not a pleasant place to be. And the Bible says, Rabbi, at midnight, they start the worship service. You see, you don't need a service to have worship. You don't need to be in church to have worship. In the midst of the warfare moment that they're facing, possibly losing their lives, they began to sing. <laughs> How filled with the peace of God do you have to be? How amazing your walk with the Lord has to be to be able to sing in a prison to the place where God has to take note and, and he shows up and chains falls off as we pray worshiping. You know the amazing thing is they didn't stop worshiping when the chains fell off and most of us probably would. They kept and they didn't run out of prison either. They were, they were content and they weren't worship to be released. They worship because he's good. You can, you can worship in the midst of your trial. You can worship in a place where it's the darkest place. That you, you, you divinely positioned for the next level of worship. 
I've, as a pastor, worked with many people through different difficult seasons of their lives. And it's a great honor and privilege to do that, to, to be invited into someone's space when they're hurting. Uh, it's, it's holy ground for us. And it's incredible to be able to, to listen first, not preach, listen first, and hear the cry of people's hearts. That's what God does. He doesn't just say, here's the answer. He actually listens, even though he has the answer. And it's a great honor just to listen to people's pain and they, and they express, they trust you enough to express what they're going through. Incredible privilege. And I've heard some dire stories of people who lost their loved ones. People, people had diagnosis of, of death, basically, cancers, and, and, and people who's lost their children. I, I don't, can't think of anything worse as a parent. And I watched them worship their way through that. It takes, some, it takes a while. Some people just step into it straight, straight there and they just, they, have, they blow my mind. But they don't waste the opportunity. They don't waste the trial to discover God in a new way in the midst of their suffering. He shows up. And for there too, the chain starts falling off. The chains of sorrow and heartache starts falling off. And you see the kindness. And it astonished me sometimes. Every time this happens, it astonished me how, how enough God's grace is for every situation. Today, we've, we've already ministered this already in the service. Mal will lead, lead us through that. You and I need to go to the next level of worship. If you've been honored with the trial, if you have been honored to be persecuted, if you have been found worthy of being persecuted for his name's sake, worship your way through it. If you go through some tough things, worship your way through it. Because that's where we go to the next level. Anybody can worship God when everything is fine. When you have enough money in account. And when everything is going well. In fact, it's hard for people to recognize God's goodness in those moments. But when you're in a difficult things and you don't know what is going to, where this thing is going to happen. How is it going to happen? It's the expression of faith. That is bigger than the faith when God provides. It's when he doesn't answer your prayer and you still worship. That's a level of faith that you're called to walk into. We worship at the level of our, of our warfare. And some of you are, are about to break through to the next level of worship. I've sensed it this morning as I was praying for you at home. I, I, I felt like this is, this is gonna be a defining moment in your life and your walk with the Lord. It's going to be the breakthrough of the breakthrough. What I mean by that, it's not just God's provision, but it's the breakthrough of what He's doing inside of you, of who you're becoming in the midst of His providing, in the midst of the trial. There's a breakthrough upon the breakthrough. He is more interested in what He's doing inside of you than what He's doing for you. Amen. He's going to have us look like Jesus one way or another. Because that's what our original design is. And lastly, we worship at the level of our desperation. In Matthew 50, we read about this Canaanite woman who came from the region and cried out to him, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my my daughter is severely demonized. But he answered her, not, not a word. He didn't respond to this woman. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, send this woman away, for she cries out after us. And he answered, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she still wouldn't go away. 
This sounds pretty harsh. I don't have time to go into the background story of this woman. But suffice to say, she displays an act of desperation because of a child. When we're desperate to the place, when we're hurting, disillusioned, in pain, disappointed, and God seems to be silent, when God is ministering to you in, your, in his hiddenness, you can still worship. I don't know how many of you have experienced God's silence. I have. Even though I'm prophetic, there are times I come to his throne and he says nothing. How many of you know what I'm talking about? He's just quiet. And then I start inspecting, is there sin in my life? <laughs> okay, have I, have, I, have, have I done anything wrong, God? And after going through that whole, whole process, and it's a good process, uh, I can't find anything obvious. Anything that he's put his finger on that it's just quiet. And it's an invitation of, I've, I've learned for me to come after him and seek him. Because in the seeking, I'm moving on to the next level of worship. There's a reason why the scripture tells us to seek him with all our heart. Most of us are coming to the kingdom and God seeks us, right? He comes after us while we're sinning, he loves us. But there's a maturity that has to come to you and my relationship with the Lord where I go after Him. Where I seek Him with all my heart. I pursue Him. And in that desperate place that we call to walk, we go to the next level of worship. I, I do know that a lot of people are comfortable not speaking to God for days on end. And it's an indication of where you are with the Lord. Now, I don't say this to shame anyone. I've been there. But I, I want to encourage you, unless you're desperate for God, you will never go to the next level of worship. Unless you're hungry for God. And you know what? You steward your appetite, not God. You get to decide how much time you spend in front of a TV and how much time you spend in the Word. That's on you and me. You steward your desire for God. God's not going to make you do anything. You and I are responsible to watch over our heart. You, are, you and I are responsible to watch over our thoughts and our tongue even. He honors our free will. He honors your decisions that you take. And it's your and my decision that we take that can determine how deep we go in God or how shallow we go with God. Are we going to the next level of worship? Our desperation for God is, is the first step we take in action to say, Lord, I need you. And that desire starts to grow the more we press into God. How many of you found your, yourself in the Word and you can't stop reading the Word? It just keeps coming. The revelations keeps coming. You know what I'm talking about? It's just, it's just coming. You know what happens? You're stirring up a desire for God. Suddenly, you're developing an appetite for His presence, for the Word. How many of you start, no, you're praying, and, and before you know it, it's an hour or two or three hours later, you, you're just in a prison, and you don't even feel tired. What are you doing? You're stewarding something, a desire of desperation for God, and you're being energized as you're pressing to the Lord. Are you hungry enough, desperate enough to go to the next level? Now, I'm coming back to this late coming story. I'm not because I'm trying to hammer it. I'm just trying to connect dots for you. When you don't come ready to worship God and you, and you drag yourself into this place, you're not hungry enough. You're not desperate enough to encounter God in the corporate and to press in and to collectively 
steward the presence of God together as a church to have more of God. You're responsible just as much as the worship leader is responsible to steward the presence of God. It is your hunger and desperateness for God that creates an environment of faith, an environment of hunger, an environment where anything is possible and miracles can take place. It's our collective hunger. It's the health of our collective church, our desperateness for God, our hunger for God that we steward together. And you matter in the, in, the, in the equation. Your faith matters. Your desperateness matters. Your desire for God matters. Your prayer matters. Your worship matters. Your singing matters. Your heart matters. Your stewardship with, the, with your obedience to the Lord matters. That's the culture that we're building together. A place where the Holy Spirit feels welcome. And we are desperate for Him. We are hungry for Him. Worship at the next level requires this kind of faith of this woman who in spite of the fact that Jesus insulted her said I'm, I'm not even going to be offended with God I'm desperate for him for a touch the woman with the alabaster bla, uh, floss she was a prostitute and, and she came into the house of a Pharisee where Jesus was dining she had to push through a, through a lot of judgment. You, you, you know that the Pharisees don't want her there. I mean, they didn't even want to mix with tax collectors, let, let alone prostitutes. To have her in their house, the desperation of this woman to worship Jesus is incredible. And then she breaks this oil that cost her years of wages. And she anoints his feet. That's not where you use the oil normally. And then she, and then she, she dries the feet with his hair. I, 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 I know that we not. I'm not. I'm just reading it. I wonder why she didn't have a towel. And all the things she had was her hair. Because the custom is that there would be a towel. And they were supposed to have washed his feet already. Because you come in someone's house, they were supposed to have washed his feet already. Because they were too holy for Jesus. And this prostitute woman comes to worship Jesus. And she's only got her hair to, to wipe his feet. Pushing through the judgments. Pushing through every obstacle, but desperate to meet with Jesus. And not just to meet with him, to worship him. And that worship was sacrificial. It cost her whole years of wages. How she come by wages, we don't talk about that. But she used that to worship Jesus even. And the beauty of all of this, she carried the same fragrance that Jesus carried because she washed, she dried his hair with her hair. This is what happens when we worship out of desperation. We carry the fragrance that is on him, the glory that is upon him. I'm pastoring you today, church, to go to the next level in your walk with God. We, we cried for revival for us as a people. For us as preachers, we cried that we would not become religious, used to this, go through the motions. I'm crying that you as a people would steward the presence of God together in a way that invites more of his presence. That all of you would walk out of this place with the fragrance of Jesus and be a blessing to the world. Would you stand with me? Thank you, Lord. 
Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will go strangely down in the light of his glory and grace. Let's sing it again. Turn your eyes. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will In life, Father, we look to you right now. We turn our five eyes upon you. We behold you in your majesty. Father, like a fish was created for water, we were created for your presence. We were created to abide in your presence. And I thank you that you did not reject anyone. But even as we experience your love early, I pray that in this moment again, we thank you that you would stir us up to go to the next level. In the name of Jesus. If you are in this place and you've never given your life to the Lord or you don't have an active relationship with the Lord, in fact, if you're honest, you say, Pastor, I'm actually backslidden. I, I don't know when last I really spoke to the Lord and I don't, I don't even know if I ever truly spoken to God. You amongst people who will not judge, you amongst people who know what it means to receive mercy a people who knows what it means to receive forgiveness. We too have been restored in our relationship with the Lord. Maybe you're saying, I need to be restored. I need to come to God. I need to give my life to Him. Whether it's for the first or subsequent time, I would like you to just lift your hands. I would like to pray with you. If that's you, you say, Pastor, that's me. I need, to, I need to get right with God. Just put up high so, so I can see it. I need to get right with the Lord. I'm not sure if I had to die today that I would be with him. I don't have the certainty of my salvation, but I want to see that hand, but I want to be certain. Anybody else? I want to know that he's my, my Lord, and heaven is my home, and God is my father. Anyone else? That's okay. I know there's more people, and I don't know what it is that, that holds you back, but this is not a time to to worry about people's opinions. There happens to be no Pharisees, hopefully, here, but like that woman, like that woman who pushed through the shame of her life and was desperate enough to say, Lord, I'm coming to you to worship. You might have to do that. Anybody else? I see that hand. You can put your hand down. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Okay, I'm not going to prolong this. See that hand as well. Anyone else? I know there's more people. I know there's more people. I've prayed for you already. I know there's, there's a harvest today that I'm meant to be bringing in. And I don't want to, I don't want to disobey the Lord, but I, I think you need to obey God too. Don't wait for me to, to say the right thing. You know what's going on in your heart. You know that God's calling you. Put up your hand high if that's you. Okay, well, I'm going to ask these people to come forward. If you, if you raised your hand, would you come, come like this right now? Of His glory and grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. This is so beautiful. Upon Jesus. If you need to get back here, down here, please don't wait. Look through in His 
While they minister to the gentleman in front, I want like us to, to lift our hands before the Lord. If you say, I need a breakthrough in worship, I need, to, I need fresh revelation, I'm in a storm right now, I'm in a battle right now, I'm in warfare right now, I need, I need breakthrough in this area. I, and you're saying, I, I'm, I need more desperation, I need God to change the appetite, to help me change the appetite. Lift up your hands before the Lord. Father, I thank you right now that as a people we come before you as a church. We are so conscious of, of our tendency to worship out of habit, to become religious, even in the charismatic church. We bring our hearts before you. You know us better than we know ourselves. And I'm asking you, Father, for revival in this church. We're asking you, God, to visit us with fire. We're asking you, God, to shake us out of any religious acts and practices and mindsets. And I thank you, God, for, this, for the stewardship of the Holy Spirit, for the ministry, for that which is in our hearts already as a people. Thank you for what you're doing amongst us. But we are hungry for more. We desire more of your presence. We desire more of your manifest presence through our hands, through our ministries, through our lives. I pray that we would steward faith in this house well. That we would steward the lost and the desire for the lost well. I'm asking you, Spirit of God, for the fear of God to increase in this house. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now as we stand before you, we invite you to take us deep in prayer. If you prepare to pay the price to go deeper with the Lord, would you raise both your hands as an act of saying, Lord, I, I'm willing. Lord, whatever it takes, We'll seek your face. Whatever you ask us to do, we pray that we would do that. Not our will be done, but yours be done. I'm asking you, Spirit of God, for a corporate grace and anointing for us as a people, not to be satisfied with ankle deep or even waist deep. Teach us how to walk this out. Holy Spirit, we invite you to lead us and help us to pray how we ought to pray. Press and focus on the things that we're supposed to be focusing on. We covered your leadership. No man can truly lead us. You lead us, Lord. So I'm asking you to visit us again. For those who haven't heard your voice, in a long time, speak to us again. Forgive us if we quenched you or grieved you. Forgive us if we shut down, if you've mistreated your Holy Spirit. Forgive us. Have mercy on us as a people. When you've asked us to do something and we've disobeyed you, we store our faith and we store our conviction. And may it be done not out of compulsion, but out of love for our Father. So as I send your people, I pray that you would abide and be with them. That your grace will go with them. That they would know that you fathered them today. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your gentle ministry. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your conviction. Now fill us now. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your presence, Jesus. We wait on you.
as you prepare to go home, I'd like to ask you to make this final confession. Say, Father, we as a people want more of your presence. We want to break through to the next level of worship and obedience. We ask you as a congregation to visit us, cleanse us, wash us with your word. Lead us into holy living. We thank you for the God who's with us. You abide with us as we go. Your presence rests upon us. And you affirm us afresh as your children. Thank you for breakthrough in our worship. In the name of Jesus, the people of God say, Amen. God bless you as you go. Can I say before you go, some of you are going to be called to deeper prayer. I know you might not be used to it, but just go with it. Just press into God. Can you say amen? Don't expect the same week like last week. Expect God to do something different for you. God bless you. Thank you.